Up today, we're going to be speaking with Crystal Hauserman, Chief Marketing Officer at 1111 Media. Crystal was recently named to the 2023 Forbes Entrepreneurial CMO list. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So, Crystal, it's interesting. You got your start in your career, uh, you know, in the legal field as an entertainment attorney. Totally random, uh, yes, right? Yeah. So, how did it? <laughs> I don't know if it's random or sort of something that's predictive of where you are today. Probably a little bit of both. But what led you to that decision? Yeah, you know, when you look back, it makes sense. But at the time, and that's, we'll get to that later. But yeah, you know, I grew up in Oklahoma. And I always had an obsession with movies and storytelling and art. And I, I wanted a major in movie making when I was a kid. But of course, I had the very practical parents who were like, what are you going to do with that? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I went to law school out in Los Angeles and graduated and, and got the big snazzy law firm job and worked um, at, you know, kind of a blue chip uh, firm in Century City. Mm -hmm. And at the ripe age of 26, realized that's not what I wanted to do with my Why? life. Can you, can you believe it? <laughs> I think I always chalk it up, to, and this is probably ind indicative of my future career path. I said I wanted to make art, not war. And I think, you know, I was a trial lawyer. And while it gave me great training in terms of preparedness and results and measure with results and always come in with a plan, and I think those skills definitely show up in what I do now. Sure. I think I just didn't want on the daily basis to be arguing over uh, who who is going to switch money between whom, right? Right. And so I had that revelation that I really wanted to follow back to my original plan of a more creative and expressive endeavor and put uh, fun things out in the world. And the rest is history. Yeah. So, so then you moved over to... Um... Uh, the entertainment world directly, directly and was working more in the in the marketing and media side of things. So exactly. how was that transition? And did you know right away it was the right move for you? Oh, yeah. And I think, you know, it's one of the things I, I do a lot of mentorship, even as busy as I am, I always feel like spending that time to help those that are kind of where I was 15 years ago is so important. And look, it wasn't the transition isn't always easy, right? Yeah, you know. kind of go in and talk to people. And I had lots of connections across entertainment and at studios and production companies. And these were the days before before Zoom, Matt, can you imagine? And so if you wanted to do a networking call, you had to get in your car, drive someplace, pay for parking that you probably couldn't afford. You're in LA, sitting in a lot yeah, of traffic. Sit, right. sit in a lot of traffic, sit in their office to walk in and they'd be like, oh, you're a lawyer. What you what do you want to do here at my, at my studio, right? Yeah. And so I did a lot of that for you know, a couple years, right? And I'll always credit who I was actually talking to this morning, uh, Rosanna. She was over at a company called Full Screen, and a friend of a friend put me in touch and, you know, had a meeting with her. She was in the legal department. So it shows you you can kind of make your entree any way you can. And, you know, I said, look, I really, I want to, I want to flex in marketing. That's what I studied in undergrad. It's what I'm really good at. Um, great with clients, great with creative. And she was like, huh. You know, there's a role. Let me introduce you to a friend of mine. He's hiring for his team, and the rest is history. So I went up, went up there. Bo Bryant, always give him credit for giving me my kind of break in that world, and became the the head of marketing at a company called Full Screen, which was really one of the first creator driven um, businesses started by a founder George Trumpolis, who was the architect of the YouTube monetization program for creators. So where we are, I always. All of us who were part of that full screen ride kind of are looking where the market is now when everybody, that's all people are talking Your about. Creator Creators, economy, creator, yeah. the creator economy. And man, George, we are such a visionary. Um, you know, he started that company 10, over 10 years ago. So we were kind of ahead. We were ahead of our time a little early, but it was a great ride. And I met some of the most brilliant people and we've all now gone on to different companies and um, it's just really a phenomenal you know, springboard. Yeah. And, and speaking of the creator economy, you know, where do you think we are today in that cycle? Because Ooh. part of me feels like it's oversaturated. Mm -hmm. Everybody's a creator. And it's like there's more creators than consumers in some time, at yeah. some point when you look at it. At the same time, people are not watching linear television. They're staring at their phones all day. Exactly. That's where the content comes from. Uh, you know, in terms of the adoption cycle, both by brands and by consumers, mm -hmm. where do you think we are overall? Yeah, Matt, Matt, you nailed it. Like, Gen Z and even more Gen Alpha, they're not watching TV. You yeah. know, they're on those phones, they pick them up at the time they come out of the womb, I, th I think knowing how to swipe and scroll. And look, brands have gotten the memo, okay? So if you go go on TikTok, go on, you know, IG and, and Snap even, like, you know, the brands have, have gotten where the consumer is. And so I think 
we're we're at the weight we're at the top of it right i think you know look at possible where we are today and a company like influential who's here and i was talking to chris and ryan yesterday who are the you know the founders yep, of the company enough. and it's only blowing it's only exploding right and the definition of who is influential or a creator is vast right it's not just that youtuber it is you know the niche dumb and it's the person that's into fashion or social good or filmmaking Soon it or could be teacher. a bot and not even a real person that's an influencer uh, those exist already <laughs> right. you know i look at my you know my buddies at red brud who who built lil michaela like how many years ago now the first digital influencer i think i don't know what her following yeah. is up to now combine but, like, that with generative ai and it's pretty scary on where it could all go yes i we'll talk a little bit more about AI. i think there's beautiful applications and things that we can that will open up doors but it with great power comes great responsibility. For sure. Is that a quote from Star Wars, yeah. I think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree with you. And mm -hmm. I do think that sometimes, you know, I think influencers and what that means could get ahead of itself. And yes. people try to cater to the masses and grow an audience. And over time, they take on every brand and they lose their actual community. So that's sort of the risk with Nailed all this. It. Nailed yeah. it. Nailed it. I think, look, there's a, with every, as with everything in life, Matt, like, you know, there's a path you can go if you're just shilling out for every brand on the planet. Gen Z and Jill Nafa are too flipping smart for that, yeah. right? And I think picking they'll really- They'll see right through it. Yeah, they'll see right through it. And I think picking authentic collaborations that are true to the person that people are really passionate about. Oh, we all, this isn't rocket science. Like people really understand that. And the brands that really get that and who also let creators create. You'd be surprised, you know, in my career over the last 15 years, you know, these big brands will go out and they say, we've got to be working with creators and we'll go out and we'll cast the most perfect creators for, you know, whether it's a commercial spot or, or something else. And then they want to give them scripts right. and they want to totally control the creative. Every, well, they need to yeah, do this. Take away they everything to, that got them there to take, begin with. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think that's probably the key or that one of the big takeaways out of this is like, you know, and look, the most savvy brand marketers, a lot of my peers, like they totally get this, but it's like really st stepping out of the way within obviously brand safety <laughs> limits of letting those creatives really fly and soar, I think is just the key to doing it, to doing it right. Absolutely. So full screen, uh, as you mentioned, you worked there mm -hmm. for uh, three or four years and they were acquired by Warner Media. Yep. And then you stuck around at Warner for a little bit and then ultimately decided to leave. What was the experience of being at a, a you know, startup -y small company and all of a sudden seeing yourselves within uh, Warner, how did that change yeah. the culture and, and your role overall? It was cool. Look, we, yeah, we were part of the big merger back in 2020 at the height of the pandemic. So man, there was a lot of stuff going on, right? We were going through, you know, restructuring and acquisitions and a gigantic merger that had been hung up for a couple of years. Um, but, you know, finally coming to the table and being not just the scrappy digital startup, but then getting to work across the whole portfolio of Warner, right. where it was like we were suddenly on calls with the folks from CNN, with the folks from HBO Max, rest in peace, aka now the, for, the artist formerly we known know as right. HBO Max. I think we're Max now. Um, and all these just amazing brands. And so we ended up like, look, you have more resources, you have more collaborators, you have more opportunity. And so we did some really... Uh, what well, the kids would say, banger activations and, and things for HBO, for um, really cool things at Sundance to celebrate a lot of the um, theatrical releases that were coming out. So it was really great to take what we knew and had learned over so many years at full screen of taking the power of creators to really support business and drive commerce and it was a it was a heck of a ride absolutely yeah and then last year uh you joined the role that you're currently at which is yep. cmo of 11 11 media mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about 11 11 and what excite you about this opportunity absolutely so a friend of a friend um knows you know it's funny that as you mentioned the forbes entrepreneurial cmo thing came out today and he was like you're so entrepreneurial and like you get to try these things and he's like you just love these environments where there's no rule book, right? right? And you just get a like, if you're let to go and play, like you could do like extraordinary Not stuff. Not bound by the corporate shackles, so to speak. Exa exactly. Yeah. See where I'm going with this, Matt. So he yeah. said, you should go talk to Paris. And I was like, okay. To Paris Hilton. Uh, yeah, to, yeah, to Paris Hilton. I was like, random. <laughs> um, but I had been, you know, I'd been in the 
clubhouse kind of sort rest in peace clubhouse no right. i know clubhouse is still around and i love the platform and it was so innovative at the time i spent a hell of a much we too time did. there in the pandemic yeah but that's kind of what i had started to notice about paris she was like hanging in clubhouse and talking about her investments talking about the metaverse and web3 and so i kind of had my impression of her wasn't from 20 years ago it was like this new modern paris and so when he said i was like well that's really interesting and so i went over and talked to um you know, Bruce Gersh over there, who's the co-founder of 1111 uh, with Paris and, and eventually met Paris and just listening to their vision. Um, and it's a big one, right? Taking, and it's actually what I'm speaking about at Possible tomorrow. <laughs> um, how do you take such an iconic person and build it into this multifaceted brand? Now she's done a heck of a good job over the past 20 Absolutely. years doing that herself but really in ways that people don't even in realize ways that people don't even yeah. realize and so i think that's what i immediately got it when i went to go meet with her and just the breadth of everything that we do you know we're a full-fledged media and consumer products company so film television audio through our deal with iheart three different podcasts that we're doing right now with a new one to be announced soon. I'm very excited. Um, consumer product. We had 19 different product lines last year. We're the what number types of products? Oh my gosh. We're the number one new cookware I, um, uh, collection on Amazon. Uh, track suits, fragrance. She sold $4 billion in wow. fragrance alone over the past 20 years. We're about to release. We'll release our 30th at the top of next year with more products coming. Obviously her all our forays into Roblox and, and Sandbox, AKA the metaverse or gaming platforms. Um, and then all our brand partnerships, you know, we do really trailblazing work and she was the first influencer. I like to call her not just an influencer, she's influential oh, to yeah. understand like how to really come to the table and create things that resonate with an audience that move and inspire them to engage and to purchase. So when you talk about, I mean, the cookware mm -hmm. example kind of surprised me a little bit. So yep. when you talk about the number one cookware brand on Amazon, mm -hmm. what goes into a decision like that? You know, yep. what's the connection between that and 11 and 11? Is there like consumer research that goes into it first? And how do you produce and roll out a product like that? And is that part of your everyday role? Absolutely. So look, the cookware, the cookware launch is really, really exciting. And I think you hit on something that's kind of the hallmark of 1111 and that we test and learn a lot across you'd have all to you can't just, just roll out a cookware to. brand have it be number one you have without... to exactly right. and so look we we have a really great partner in uh epica and they do all kinds of product launches all around the world and so they are you know they're a partner in that endeavor and they're fantastic uh the team over there and you know paris has a lifelong passion for cooking uh did a show called cooking with paris and just based on the fan reaction and success of that show became kind of a no-brainer. People were asking, like, well, I want some Paris-style cookware, right? You know, you see the normal black and white steel potless pots and pans, mm -hmm. and can we make some things that are quintessentially hers? So if you see the line, it's, you know, eggshell color and pink, of course, but really cool designs. And the Epica team did such a great job in collaboration with Paris's vision for the line. And so it's constantly on display in the in the kitchen and it's just beautiful. It's beautiful stuff and it's high quality and it's at a really fair price point. I think it's right now on sub $100. And so when you can get a five, six piece set, super functional and cute, like it just is a no brainer. Yeah. But that's a whole different business line than, than producing film or yes. podcasts, etc. So how does that manifest to your role? Because it yep. sounds like essentially it's an entrepreneurial conglomerate where you're just churning out different business ideas. You know, that that model is ripe with challenges because you're not going deep and focusing on one thing. You're doing many different things. So I'd imagine for you, you have to wear a lot of different hats. So and, many. you know, how do you juggle that relative to maybe some roles you had in the past where it's far more focused? Exactly. Look, we have a, a killer team, number one. Like, nobody is an island in these sorts of roles. And so... Look, you're right, right? We work with amazing licensing partners. That's number one, right? So there, the collaboration is there and, you know, our head of licensing brand partnerships. You know, it's, it's you know, we have a whole team that comes in and, and talks with all our partners, making sure we're understanding their goals and, and delivering for them. 
We have our head of Web3 and Metaverse, right? She's a fantastic strategist, a former Deloitte who, you know, she's my right hand, Cynthia Miller <laughs> um, brain on, you know, the brands like L'Oreal's Urban Decay and others that come to us and say, we, we want to get into the Metaverse and we want to do it in an authentic way. And you guys are there. So I think it's, look, it's, it, it's entrepreneurial is, is, is absolutely what it is, right? It is testing it's a it's a bunch of different businesses and ideas and and this year what you'll see in a couple of months is we're going hard into music um there'll be a big announcement not to scoop ourselves on wednesday <laughs> um but really going there right and there's nothing more at the epicenter of pop culture probably than music and yeah. so we're going there we just had our our book released um march 14th it's now it's fifth consecutive week on the new york times bestseller list so yeah i mean we're in everything <laughs> true media company um but multifaceted and it, but it's not an outlier right look you know rock the bells ll's company kevin hart Same heartbeat thing. we have Kevin Hart, yeah. heartbeat uh, Issa Rae, yeah. you know, it is, this is, this is a model. I had a, a dinner sports, last night. you with, have LeBron James, Kevin, uh, Kevin Durant exactly. has his own company, Boardroom. I, I had dinner right. with Roberto uh, last night from uh, Pitbull 305. Why, why is that? I mean, right? is, do you think that's the future where, because, you know, I wrote about my book years ago, Youth mm -hmm. Nation, where I talked about brands are people, people are brands. Yep. And Paris Hilton has definitely built herself as a brand. And now she's essentially parlaying or leveraging that brand into a conglomerate do you think this is the path moving forward where it's driven by individuals and their persona and that becomes essentially since they have the audience sure and the platform they can build from like do you see this being a something with staying power absolutely look yeah. i think stars that have reached Kim Kardashian's a, another one obviously exactly yeah. and I Kylie mean, and the whole thing yeah absolutely look there are certain traditional Hollywood stars that kind of do their thing and they take their you know movie money and kind of go off into the right, sunset Tom Hanks, right? right he doesn't have a exactly platform, so right? <laughs> you know but I think those who have you know different ambition to kind of grow a business out of that are following this kind of multifaceted path whether it is you know media project you know hello sunshine that's another you know Reese's yep. company like it's another example of i think it's a natural progression to kind of an art maybe an artist that starts out in their career and is kind of the center with the camera focused on them proverbially who then want to turn it out and based on you know the things that they've learned in terms of creativity i think it's a natural you know progression to the next level they yeah. have such savvy that's the thing but that's it's not for everyone no but it's right. the thing that strikes me about paris all the time is that she's so smart and she totally gets like you we bring her to brand meetings and brainstorm she know she knows she knows the the um the angle you know she knows how to break through and the cut through and she has fantastic ideas from a creative perspective and i think one of the things you mentioned of all those people the athletes included is like this the relentless focus for you know achievement and greatness and creativity and so i think that they're entrepreneurs yeah. and so i think it's natural that they're building these entrepreneurs really... with the platform and with reach with... is the biggest difference exactly and so it's kind how of involved is paris in day-to-day -day operations in incredibly terms... incredibly like look she we, we've we were all hired by paris right and you know i talked to her daily you know she's she's the prover i call her the I, the creative life force i told us more you're the creative life force of this team you know she is the heart of what we do, who we do it with, and why. You know, she built this company with the vision of bringing sparking joy um, and inspiration and really elevating women and girls. And that's a lot of um, the impact. She does a great job of that. that. I can tell you yeah. firsthand uh, as a father of an 18 year old that she really inspires a lot of young women to yep. want to be the best selves and to be entrepreneurs and right. and and feel like it's possible. Yep. And if you compare that with the celebrity of 20 years ago, mm -hmm. that certainly wasn't what was in people's minds. Exactly. So does she understand, I guess, that the responsibility that comes with that? Because I think it's pretty transformational. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And you can look good while doing it. Yeah. I, think that's, <laughs> I think that's the thing we talk about is, you know, Early in her career, she talks about walking into rooms where she was in, you know, really male dominated rooms and being underestimated. Right. You know, you're talking about an entrepreneur with a multi billion dollar company, the highest paid female DJ in the world, and a bazillion other, the, the ultimate multi hyphenate. But because of the way she presents, you know, being underestimated. Yeah. And I think the world is now seeing, uh, thanks to the great work of 1111 and really the memoir, and then the documentary that came out a couple of years ago is kind of Which revealing. Is great. The, the person behind the eye, the person behind the persona or the the real human behind the icon um and it's 
you know, I'm really, we're just beyond elated. She actually is going to go to D.C., I believe it's next week with our head of impact um, to introduce bipartisan federal legislation really is the um, to dismantle that troubled teen industry that was covered extensively, both in the documentary and the book. And we've already changed laws in seven states um, to really try to put a dent in that in that industry. If you know much about it, yeah. it's pretty um, horrific. And, you know, the victims of it, quite honestly, aren't always kids from an affluent background, but often they it's don't a always huge, have a voice. And it's also a huge funnel from the foster care system and, you know, people that are picked up at the border. And so we're really just proud. And that's something that really motivates her. So you talked about responsibility. She intimately knows the responsibility that rests on her shoulders to to pave the way. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting because there's two types of companies. There's companies that the large established, we'll call them sleepy legacy mm -hmm. incumbents who really don't have a soul. Yeah. Everyone there who's driving it, their whole goal is just not to get fired. Right. And those are the companies <laughs> that kind of languish over time. Yeah. And then you have companies like this one where you have, you know, a powerful leader that has, you know, that has a platform and then she surrounds herself with people like yourself that like have deep domain expertise. And it's really incredible in this day and age where you can have a manufacturing partner and you can create content relatively easily and you have distribution, what can be achieved? Right, right. So it's fascinating. So let's um, talk a little bit about what you're seeing, in, specifically in the marketing space. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here in South Beach at, at the possible conference talking about really the future of the consumer as it relates to advertising, marketing, media, et cetera. What are some things that you have your eye on here in 2023 mm -hmm. that are opportunities for you to leverage for all the brands that you're working on? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I just I love coming to these. I love coming to these events. And this is the first year and hat tip to, to Chris. Uh, and the other Chris and everybody else that put this extraordinary event together it hasn't even really kicked off yet. And it's already, I can just tell. Um, You're already sitting with, across from me. I'm so already good sitting start. across from you. It started. I'm <laughs> right. in it. Um, I think, ah, what am I really excited about? I know we're, we're live shopping is one area that I think is just going to explode this year. You know, it's something been, that really took off in China and other holy markets. Smokes, yeah. really there. But I think we're we've only seen the beginning of it here. We're really, really excited about it. So on TikTok, we, allowing people to connect the content with a commerce opportunity. Exactly. And not having to drive. I mean, a website feels so very web 2.0, <laughs> like yep. it's putting people back to a website. And I think I love those advances in technology where, you know, you're just making it easier for people. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. How many times does somebody watch a TV show or a movie and they're like, I like that couch. I like that lamp. I like that dress. Exactly. And it's just not even how intuitive. How do I find it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's something we're really excited about. And obviously, you know, continuing foray into the digital, to the digital realm, um, you know, loyalty programs, token-based loyalty programs, I think is something really excited. I exciting on the blockchain. You on mean. the blockchain, yeah. right? So I think where you know NFT has kind of become a little bit of a scary word. Well, it has, but marketers. I can, you know what? So was dot com exactly. when pets dot com imploded in two thousand. Exactly. So you know, I look at the traditional innovation curve where all the media is talking about it, it gets overhyped, yes. the bubble bursts, then the real work begins. And then 10 right. years later, it becomes part of because the, the consumer becomes ready, the applications meet where the consumer where they are. And then I think the blockchain that and probably NFTs will be there. A hundred percent. And it's the people who are going to keep their head put their head down, do the hard work yep. that are going to win on the other I side. Think we just look, I say we, but I think we just made it a little scary of going to market with, you know, in the in the relationship to crypto and things like that. And the consumer wasn't ready. It was in the middle of the financial like, bubble, what? too. Yeah, yeah. Consumers had too much money, didn't know what to do with it they inflated the cost it was exactly. sort of like the perfect storm for that yeah but the technology is is game changing i mean look at what starbucks has done with their program and i think what whereas you know in the past loyalty programs are about you know can i collect points and i redeem them for you know free coffee or something i think the bounds of consumer experience and engagement not only do you own the data which is lovely yeah um but you know your ability to create really bespoke experiences, unlock content, unlock IRL, you know, engaging things with fans, which I absolutely love. And Paris love. has been in that from the beginning, from right? From the beginning, yeah. from the beginning, you know, uh, we have- The Bored Ape, she was one of the first <laughs> celebrities who adopted that. Yeah, so we, you know, she was mapping her avatar, like, I think like eight years ago, right? And really, really, she was one of the founding benefic um donators for the LACMA's uh, female digital art fund. And so has been really heavily involved. And I think, again, that's kind of one of the signatures of 1111, what makes us so unique is you have 
you know, this, this creative force, the helm, who has never been afraid to try something new and always knew where the ball was going before anybody else. And so I just think it's so cool to be, you know, kind of, you know, helping her build towards the vision of what's new and next, because boy, does she know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's shift gears here as we wrap up uh, in terms of you and your mm -hmm. career trajectory, because you obviously seen a very exciting career um, starting at a law firm and now yep. anywhere but, right? Yes. And although, <laughs> as you said earlier, a lot of what you learned there is still applicable today. Um, for some of our younger listeners on the Speed of a Culture podcast, you talk about mentorship and yeah. how important that is. What's some wisdom that you would impart just based upon your learnings in your, uh, you know, nearly twenty-year career thus far, mm -hmm. that you think other people would be uh, well served in embracing, yep. so they could end up in a place where they're equally as excited about what they're doing. I love this question. So I, I got to tell you, I my first uh, plug uh, is for a fantastic organization called Monday Night Mentorship, started by Jabari, um, Hearn, uh, and Julian Duncan, a few years ago to help elevate. Uh, early to mid-stage mid career marketers of color. And they invited me to come be part of it. And I kind of said, is this room for me? Right. And they said, we need you in this room because you are in a position of ability to, to make these changes. And I'll tell you, it's the most pivotal, it's the most honest thing anybody's ever told me and the most life-changing thing. And so for the past three years, I probably meet at least five or six mentees from from those I meet from that group a month. And some I've been doing this with for three years. It's fantastic. Um, it's probably so rewarding oh, for you. Oh, and I love it. I love yeah. it. And by the way, I take just as much away from it um, in those conversations because, boy, boy, there's, are, are these early and mid-stage career marketers. They're so smart and they so get it. And I just wish. And so they ask me this often, like, what? You know, I, the one thing I tell them, a lot of them, I would say, patience isn't necessarily <laughs> their strong suit. I think in marketing people, particularly like even the youngest amongst them, gosh, man, they're like, well, how do I get to where you are? And, you know, you're talking about people that are like late 20s. And I just say, man, you know, the ride is rarely a straight arrow. Look at look at my background. And we hear right? that over and over oh, again. Oh, my gosh. But, but in this age of you know, FOMO and everybody looking yes. at everyone else on Instagram. Stop it. You have a lot of impatient yes, people that want do. it to happen right away and they don't understand. It, that doesn't happen for anybody right away, not even Paris. Exactly. Right. 100%. And so I think, look, it, taking taking the ride, taking, taking as much as you can from the experience and giving back as much as you can from every place you land, every team you land. I mean, from me, from... The law firm met incredible people there that I still talk to to this day that are now all at entertainment companies and brands. And I think being impeccable with your relationships, like the book says, um, you know, impeccable with your word, following through, doing the things, giving your time, I think is the most important thing. Never getting so, you know, <laughs> to a place where you're like, I don't have time to talk to people. Right. And I think going on and then just trusting like when you're in the middle sometimes of that trajectory you're looking back and you're like oh, this doesn't make sense or you might be in a role that's a it's a bridge role right it's something it's it's a friend of mine once said you know it's a stepping stone not a tombstone yeah and i love that right you know it, it's trusting that you're on the path and there's something to be taken from absolutely every scenario and then kind of when you look back and i find this often and in, in love and in life and relationships and everything it makes a lot of sense when you look backwards but sometimes it's hard to see it when you're in it and i think you know do great work be a great human um have everybody speak highly of you when you when you show up and until the day that you go and i think that's just that's the way I try to live life. Fantastic advice. <laughs> but, you know, so the is that that profound? Yeah, I'm not sure. It, it is to yeah. me. So, I mean, to close out here, is there, mm -hmm. just taking all that in, in mind, is there one mantra that you like to live by that you often oh, find mantras. yourself saying? Matt, you know me too well. So <laughs> I, uh, guilty as charged, I'm a 12-year veteran Burning Man woman. So I love mantras, breathing, <laughs> yoga. Um, I think... Look, it's similar to what we were just talking about, particularly amongst the younger gen that's coming, kind of coming behind. It was like, it's this impatience. So like, what's next? What's next? How do I get there? And they've been in a job for a year and they're like, what do I, what do, I do? Man, slow down, right? Because, you know, at the end, there's no, there's not a huge prize at the end. Wait, this is, we're, you're on the journey. You're yep. on the ride. So you're true. learning this stuff as you go. And so I, I think the question of slowing down, 
breathing and also not losing, you know, the work is fantastic. I'm inspired by the work. I'm inspired by the people I get to work with and the brands that come to the table and the amazing stuff we get to do. But I think always never lose yourself. Never lose time with your family and never lose time with your chosen family, AKA your friends and your dog, yeah. right? <laughs> I just really think like well-rounded people are, are what is gonna create breakthrough work. Absolutely. Well, that's amazing and great advice. I'm so appreciative of your time today and that we had you on the podcast. So on behalf of Susie and Edwi Keem, thanks again to Crystal Hauserman, Chief Marketing Officer at 1111 Media for joining us today. We're here in South Beach Live with much more to come. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the Speed of Culture podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Thanks again. I do it again. We're not live. Let me do it one more time. Yeah. On behalf of Susie and the Adwe team, thanks again to Crystal Hauserman, Chief Marketing Officer at 1111 Media, for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the Speed of Culture podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Till next time, see you soon, everyone. Take care. The Speed of Culture is brought to you by Susie as part of the Adweek Podcast Network and A Guest Creator Network. You can listen and subscribe to all Adweek's podcasts by visiting adweek.com slash podcasts. To find out more about Susie, head to suzy.com. And make sure to search for The Speed of Culture in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Click follow so you don't miss out on any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Suzy, thanks for listening.